to get things set up at the last minute, and uh, tonight's one of those nights. Uh, it's actually great to be here. I drove in just uh, 45 minutes ago from Washington, D.C., so it's good to know that we made it, and, and uh, we're a little anxious about that. Uh, one of my big things yesterday was when we were in D.C., Jill and I were walking around. Uh, we had Habitat students there, which was fun for them, but Jill and I were walking to see the Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, exhibit, and if you're ever there, you want to go and see it. It's actually very fascinating. Um, and, but while we were doing that, the San Diego Chargers buses came past us with the uh, motorcycle bear, uh, um, motorcade, and uh, so that was kind of fun. Being a sports guy, that was cool. So. Uh, it's good to have you here. A couple quick things about worship this evening. We're going to be uh, remembering the saints, which is a time for us to uh, remember and give thanks for family and friends that have passed away. And uh, in a minute, we're going to show names that we have received. And if there's someone that you would like us to remember today that's not on our list, I'm going to ask you to just tell me their names so that I can add them to the list. Uh, when we get that far in the worship service. Uh, there's some uh, worship reminders for tomorrow. Hillary Leslie is our chapel speaker, and so you're invited to come and hear her uh, speak in chapel. And um, on Tuesday is the Tunnel of Oppression, uh, Tuesday evening, so I encourage you to make your way down to, I believe, Patterson Hall and uh, work your way through the tunnel and uh, <clears throat> I encourage everyone to do that. I think that's going to be a good experience for us. And it's involved a whole uh, campus community, which is kind of uh, fun for us to be able to do that. And then uh, Friday's chapel speaker is Amber Hill. And so we invite you to come again on Friday to hear Amber. And then next Sunday evening, as part of our worship, um, Sarah Carlson is going to be sharing a little bit about her experience this past summer in India. So uh, four real, three or four really nice things this week in addition to the regular activities uh, that we sponsor uh, with fellowship groups and so forth. Garrett, let's go ahead and take a look at the list of names uh, for today if you can pull them up. Um, again, take a look. If there's someone that's not on there you want us to remember, all you have to do is give me their name. Don't hesitate. Anyone you'd like us to remember that's not on the list? Uh, we had Grover Pittman. Okay. John and Debbie. 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 Oh, that's right. Okay. Last name again. Dady. Ann Holzer. Anyone else? Yes? Uh, Mary Centrella. Okay. Jen or Jim? Jim McGuire. Okay. Yep. Teresa Mixon. Mixon, M I X S O N. Robert Stage. Okay, great, thank you. Yes? Alex, yeah. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear it. John, last name? Pettin. Pettin? Pettit. 
Okay, gotcha. Sorry, it's just hard to hear. Anyone else back here? Okay, yeah. Say it again. May know? Okay. Wait. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Folks, it's uh, great to have you here. Uh, let's uh, uh, prepare ourselves for worship with the prelude. In this song. and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear. Though the earth should change and the mountains shake. God is our refuge and strength. Though the waters roar and our security threatened. God is our refuge and strength. The Lord is our strength and our might. God is our salvation. This is our God. Come, Come let us praise, praise the Lord. Lord. Please bow your heads in prayer with me. Eternal God, neither death nor life can separate us from your love. 
Grant that we may serve you faithfully here on earth and in heaven. Rejoice with all your saints who carelessly, ceaselessly proclaim your glory. Though, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I'd like you to open the hymn books to uh, page 526 and or follow along if you'd like on the screen, but uh, the music is in the hymn books for all the saints. This first scripture reading comes from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I'd like to invite you to turn the hymn books to hymn number 599. This is a Tze song that uh, is a wonderful prayer, and I'd like to invite you to use this song as a prayer to prepare your hearts uh, for the reading of our uh, remembrance of those who have passed away in the past years, uh, family, friends, and uh, those perhaps we know and those we do not. We'll be singing this through four times. So prepare yourselves for our worship as we sing together. Please remain seated.
Let me pray. Lord, as we seek to remember you and we remember our loved ones, we pray that as they come into your kingdom that they might be received by you. And the knowledge of that helps us be assured of your presence and lifts perhaps some of our fear and trembling and reminds us of your gift of peace for us. Hear our prayers, O Lord. Amen. Let us remember family and friends. Jan Bates. Frederick Brobeck. Father George Brunish. Stacy Burless. James Burns. Jeffrey Burns. H. Dewey DeWitt. Leonard Evanoff. Carol Schonenhard Ferringer. Douglas Fairs. Charles H. Fisher. Deborah Foster. Wally Hill. Kathy Coop. Tim Krantz. Philip A. Lewis. Clarence J. Martin. Ruth Moonteen. Joy Peace. Betty Saladay. Isabel Shields. Renee Shields. Gabrielle Simcoe. Amy Ludwizek Taylor. Robert V. Travis. Irene F. Walters. Phyllis Wasvet. John Petit. Gloria Mino. Teresa Mixon. Robert Stage. Elizabeth Dady, Anne Holzer, Mary Centrella, Grover Pittman,
John and Debbie Eloise. Tim Walters. Jim McGuire. And any family and friends that we've missed, we remember in our prayers. Please join me in prayer. Lord, we have lifted up number, a number of names to you, and we know that they are in your hands, and we're so grateful for that. On a night like this, when we remember and we give thanks, it's hard to not feel that sense of loss one more time. So remind us of your peace. Peace which transcends all understanding. Help us to trust in you, O oh Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I'd like to invite the chamber singers to come up. This next scripture reading comes from John chapter 14, verses 26 through 28. 
But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. Thanks, Sarah. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. I think that I probably have said those words a thousand times at every funeral. I've thought them before a funeral. I've prayed over them. I've reflected on them. I've struggled with them. I've come to peace with them, so to speak. And yet here they come again. Last year was a difficult year around this place. We had nine students who lost a parent. That's not supposed to happen. We had several of you that lost grandparents. Unfortunately, that's supposed to happen. We had some of you that lost siblings. That's not supposed to happen. We know that you've lost friends, some who have taken their own lives, some who lost their life in a car accident, some who went and served in the military. So we come to a service like this and we remember and we give thanks and as I was reading the list I certainly didn't know all the folks but every once in a while I would come to one that I knew and I loved being able to pause for a second because I could reflect on that person and think about Kathy Coop or think about Grover Pittman, uh, colleagues here at the college. And hopefully you were able to do the same thing. This is a Remember the Saints service. And in the New Testament, the word saints really means Christian. It doesn't just mean Christians who did great things for the faith. It doesn't mean Christians who have passed away. It means all Christians. Those who are alive and those who are dead and those who are old and those who are young and those who haven't been born yet. In some faith traditions, some Christian churches, they start out their worship service with the pastor saying uh, these words. He says, praise to the Lord, saints. And then those of you that are worshiping would respond by saying, hallelujah, praise to the Lord. So we're going to try that. Praise to the Lord, saints. Hallelujah. Praise to the Lord. It's a great way to start worship, don't you think? It's uplifting. It's a reminder that we're all saints, that God's called all of us together to be the church. To be the church. Well, here we are. Remember the Saints Sunday. In perhaps some of your faith traditions, uh, remembering the saints happens on November 1st. In this tradition, we do it uh, on the Sunday closest to that particular date. So that's why we do it today. We could be celebrating worship today with Reformation Sunday, and that would be a faithful way to do it. But I found that for us as a community, this is an important way to worship, to remember the saints. So tonight I want to talk with you about the word peace and just what that word means. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled and neither let them be afraid. These words were spoken by Jesus right before he was crucified. And he's telling the disciples that he is leaving them his peace leaving them his peace. Now what does peace look like? I was standing in my office the other day and someone said, I can see the wind blowing. Well, no, you can see the results of the wind blowing, but you can't see the wind blowing. Perhaps peace is like that. 
We can feel a sense of peace inside, but we can't really see peace. We can see people who seem to be more peaceful than other people. Perhaps a grandparent or a friend or someone who lives in the dorm with you. But can we see peace? Now there was a, a fellow who, who really wanted to see what peace looked like. And, and so this little story comes from a book called A Wardrobe uh, from the King. <clears throat> it's written by Barris Kojas. And I'm not sure that I said his name right. But here's what he did. A long time ago, a man wanted to have the perfect picture of peace. So he wasn't able to find one, so he announced that there was going to be a competition. And all the artists were invited to uh, submit something, submit a painting about peace. And so over time, paintings started coming in from far and wide. And then it came time to judge the painting. So everyone gathered. They wanted to see what did they come up with? What did they come up with with these uh, beautiful pictures of peace? And so all the pictures were draped so that no one could see them ahead of time. And, but the judges knew which one was going to be selected. So they started uncovering all of the paintings. And people would ooh and ah and clap when they saw something that they really liked. And then <clears throat> they got to the final two paintings. And so the second to the last painting was uncovered by one of the judges. And everyone kind of, ooh, is this one it? Is this piece? And this particular picture was one that uh, looked like this. It was a mirror smooth lake. And on the lake there was a reflection of a green uh, group of birch trees. And on one side of this uh, mirror smooth lake were some, some uh, sheep that were grazing. And they were undisturbed. And it looked so peaceful. So everyone thought that's got to be the winner. Now the man who had the vision for this competition came up and he, he uncovered the last one. And so when he uncovered it, everyone gasped in surprise. Could that be peace? Now this one was a little different. Rather than a glassy smooth lake, this one was a t had a tumultuous waterfall cascading down through some a rocky pericope and the crowd that was gathered there could almost feel its cold penetrating spray on them. There were stormy gray clouds threatening to explode into lightning and rain and wind was about to come and in the midst of this thundering noise that they could sense in this this beautiful picture was one tree limb that had fallen into the water and was hanging out over the edge of this waterfall. And perched right in the V of this limb was a nest. And there was a bird sitting on her eggs in that nest. And her eyes were closed and her wings were ready to cover the nest, to cover the eggs if they needed to be protected. Is that what peace looks like? Peace in the midst of chaos? I'm not sure. So we have these words from the Gospel according to John. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Peace. What is peace? This this peace that Jesus is trying to give to the disciples, who's tr he's trying to give to us. What is this peace? It's an inner peace. It's a peace that can't be described. It's indescribable, much like God. So let's look at what peace is not. And maybe that'll help us figure out what peace is. <clears throat> now in this scripture it says, Peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Now what kind of peace does the world give to us? Now, I started thinking about this one. Perhaps the kind of peace the world gives to us is a kind of peace that's willing to, when things get really difficult, turn to drugs and alcohol in order to wash it all away. Is that peace? Yeah, what kind of food do you like? Chocolate. I heard Oreos are like cocaine. So Oreos, I'm in trouble now, baby. <laughs> Cheese, I don't think that's the kind of peace the Lord's talking about. How about, 
are any of you into shopping? When you, when you get stressed out, anybody go shopping? How many pairs of shoes do you have? Uh, more than 20. Oh my gosh! You could buy all your books if you didn't have all those shoes. Anyone else go shopping when they get stressed out? Greg does. Do you find, <laughs> do you find peace in that? We think we do. Now, I have two daughters. Trust me, I know what they do when they get stressed out. They go shopping. The best part is they're no longer on my payroll. I don't care. <laughs> they can spend their own money and go shop as much as they want. Is that peace? Could peace include surfing on the internet? Anyone do that when you're just stressed out and you want to waste time and you just can't get everything done, you go surfing on the internet? Now I'm sure that you're looking for really good things, aren't you? But occasionally you stumble upon things. I'm going to share with you the confession I shared with the guys upstairs and it brought them into a hoot of laughter today. I had nothing to do when I was in, in Washington DC today except wait for 11.45 to get here so that we could leave to head back to, to New Wilmington. And so it suddenly occurred to me, any of you fantasy football players? Some of you fantasy football players? At least a couple up there. So I'm a fantasy football guy. I wouldn't say I'm a geek. I wouldn't say that I really get into it and that's how I find my peace. Uh, so I went searching for my fantasy football team because it suddenly occurred to me they play in an hour and I hadn't done anything this week. And if you don't do fantasy football, you have to update your team every week in order to, to earn points. And, and so I went on to get into my, my team and, and I started changing my team. And so I click on Philip Rivers to, meet, to be my quarterback. Now Philip Rivers is, is earning lots of points this year in fantasy football. So he's going to be my quarterback. And Tom Brady was my quarterback last week because Philip Rivers was, had a bye week. So when I click on Philip Rivers to change Tom Brady, get this, find singles in your area comes up on the screen. <laughs> Not just once, but multiple times. I couldn't get it off there and I was scared to death to click on anything. <laughs> Who knows what was coming next? <laughs> I might have found some peace in that. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Do you surf the net? How about Facebook? Facebook is, you know, uh, first year students, what was the reading about Facebook? Is Facebook making you lonely? Yes. Yeah. You know, what about Facebook? Or Twitter? Or uh, how, what's, what's the new, Insta not Instagram, what's it called? Pinterest? Snapchat. Snapchat. Are you, are you addicted to Snapchat? Yes. Oh my gosh, we're in trouble. I don't even know what Snapchat is. And maybe that's a good thing. But do you find peace in that? That's the question. Because that's the kind of peace the world gives to us. And maybe not. Maybe that's not what we want. Unfortunately, there are some people that find peace by abusing someone. There are some people that find peace by doing things they know they shouldn't be doing. There's some people that find peace by sleeping around. There's some people that find peace you answer the question. How do people find peace? Now Jesus is saying to us, peace I give unto you, not as the world gives I, gives, give I unto you, and then it goes to the next really important part. It says the kind of peace I'm going to give you is a peace that helps you deal with your troubles. A peace that helps you begin to understand what this life is about. Now many of you in this room have lost a loved one in the past several months, years. If you haven't, unfortunately, you will. You're guaranteed to become a member of this club that's going to lose a parent or a friend or a loved one. You're guaranteed of that. And so when that happens, where do you find a sense of comfort? Where do you find peace in this world? Do you turn to all these things that I told you about? Or do you turn to the kind of peace that Christ is offering? A kind of peace that you can find inside. You can't necessarily see it. 
but a kind of peace that can assure you of a few things. Listen to some of these things that come with this kind of peace, this uh, amazing kind of peace that Jesus is speaking about. I think in order to understand the peace of Christ, you have to understand that God is in control of everything. Now we tend to think we're in control, but God's in control of everything. Every circumstance. There's no way around it. So trust God, and then you can find yourself a little bit of peace. The other thing I want you to know is that the kind of peace he's talking about is that God's love for you will see you through every circumstance. When your heart is broken and you're on the ground crying from the pain of losing someone, God's going to help you move through that circumstance. And that, that move through it may take weeks, months, or years. But God's going to help you move through those circumstances. And though the pain that you feel could come when you actually lose a loved one. It could come when you break up with someone. It could come when you lose a job. It can come when you have to move to a new community and you don't know a soul. God's going to be with you in those circumstances to help bring you the peace that you need. The kind of peace that Christ offers is a kind of peace that requires something from us. And that is the ability, ability to surrender our lives. To give up a little bit of who we are and to trust. To trust. I think the foundation of that trust comes from the scriptures. It provides words for us like this scripture tonight that you probably will hear at most every funeral. Peace I leave with you. That's Jesus talking to you. Talking to the disciples. Peace I leave with you. My peace. Not as the world gives you the kind of peace that's out there, but the kind of peace that I give you is going to help you move through your times of trouble and your fears. Trust God. Trust that peace. Don't turn to the world. Don't turn to Oreo cookies. Or to your Facebook page. Or to a whole list of other things. But turn to God to find that peace. To help you move through your pain. Your loss. And when you do, at some point, you'll discover that you stepped out on the other end of that journey and you can start smiling again and you can lift your head high again and you can feel confident again and every day won't tear you down but there'll be days when you look outside like today and you'll see the incredible sunshine and rejoice in the gift. Let's pray. Lord God, we pray that you would help us, each of us, to live lives that are without consistently experiencing the incomprehensible peace that you offer. Help us to live lives filled with faith so that we might know and believe that we are the saints just as our family and friends that we remember tonight. Help us, O oh Lord. Speak to us. Comfort us, remind us of your peace. In your son's name we pray. Amen. I'm going to sing uh, the first two verses of hymn 516 in order to prepare ourselves for communion. In communion tonight, you're going to be invited to come forward and take bread from me in the middle and then move to the right or to the left and take a cup of juice and uh, you can take it back to your uh, seat and eat them if you'd like uh, and spend your time waiting as everyone gets through as a time of meditation and prayer.
My friends, as we pause during this service to receive the gifts of the Lord's table, our Lord invites all those who trust and believe him as their Lord and their Savior to come here and to eat of this bread and to drink of this cup. This is the Lord's table and you are invited to come as the people of God. Let us pray. Lord, as we prepare to receive this meal, help us to be faithful in our belief in you. You are our Father, and we thank you for your faithfulness promised in this sacrament and for the hope that we have in your Son, Jesus. As we have been baptized by water and baptized with the Holy Spirit, so that what we say may be your words and what we do may be your work. By your power, O oh God, may we be made one with Christ our Lord in common faith and purpose. Lord, as we now gather, we give thanks to you that you have created the world as we know it, that you sent your Son into the world to offer us the gift of life eternal, and that your Holy Spirit is active and alive in this place. So now, O oh Lord, be present as we share in this meal provided by you. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord and Savior gathered with the disciples probably after or right before saying the words peace my peace I give unto you and he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he said this is my body broken for you eat of this in remembrance of me and in the same way our Lord took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Drink ye all of it. For as often as you eat of this bread and you drink of this cup, you, pro you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. These are the gifts of God for you, each of you, the people of God. Come to the table. Mark. <clears throat> Lord God, for this bread and this cup, we give thanks to you. We give thanks for the love that comes to us from Jesus, who is our Lord and our Savior. May you continue to bless us, O God, as we prepare to leave here. Bless us with the knowledge that you indeed are the vine. That, you are the, that we are the vine and you are the branches and cut off from you, we can do nothing. So Lord, as we prepare to leave, remind us of that gift of grace. Alleluia, O oh Lord. Alleluia. And now hear us as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen let's stand and sing the third verse of the hymn lord we have come at your own invitation I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives, give I unto you. Let not your hearts be troubled, and neither let them be afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go forth in peace. If we have remembered someone tonight for you, you're invited to come forward and to take a rose back to your dorm or wherever you live. If there's someone that we remembered and they're not here tonight and uh, you want to take it to them because they weren't able to make it, so if we remembered a loved one for them, uh, feel free to do that. 
and or tomorrow we'll be delivering roses so um, that'll be part of tomorrow so go forth in peace rejoice in the power of God's Holy Spirit for each of you amen Thank you.